I have come with a request. What do you want? Higuchi was the name of a popular pleasure quarter that formerly stood on the lower reaches of the Yodo River, near present-day Osaka. In the dusk of an autumn day, a traveling monk arrives in town. A woman appears before him. This is the beginning of the no-play Higuchi, the woman begins reciting poems exchanged between a poet priest and a woman of the pleasure quarter whom he asked for a night's lodgings only to be refused. The events took place in the 12th century. The play was written in the 14th. There are many features of no theater that had their origins in the Zen monastery. For example, the structure of the no stage, the musical instruments, like the drums and hand drums, the forms of gesture, and the tempo. The Muromachi period, from the 14th to the 16th centuries, was the time when no drama developed. This was a time when Zen flourished in Japan. From its very start, No was strongly under the influences of Zen. The objective of No is the expression of beauty called Yugen, or profound subtlety. Yugen is beauty produced by inference and lingering echoes of an unarticulated, endless inner richness the beauty of the nothingness, or void, that Zen teaches. No is a stage art that gives shape to the mind of Zen. This is Kyoto, crowded with people out for the Gion Festival. But turn off the main roads into the back streets and you find a traditional way of life that is the way it was many generations ago. The inside and the outside of the house are swept, water is sprinkled at the entrance, everything is kept clean. Nature's changes through the seasons are expressed in a small garden. are simple and practical. Nothing here is unnecessary. Even casual manners show the importance of etiquette. Seek the origins of this way of life and you will come to Zen. Over the centuries, Zen has taken deep root, not only in religion and the arts, 
but also in the everyday life of the people. At about the same time that Western Europe was experiencing the High Middle Ages in the middle of the 13th century, the Tofukuji Temple was erected in Kyoto. Other temples built at the same time included the Kenchoji in Kamakura and the Eheji near Fukui City. Just as the European Middle Ages were inextricably linked to Christianity, so was Japan's medieval age inseparably linked to Buddhism, and particularly Zen. The history of China from the 6th to the 15th centuries and that of Japan from the 13th to the 17th cover a period of 1,200 years which cannot be discussed without taking note of Zen. This period more or less corresponds to the whole of the Middle Ages of Europe. By strange coincidence, the West and the East entered an age of religious culture at the same time. Another form of art, like no representative of Japan's Middle Ages, is the tea ceremony, or the way of tea. The tea ceremony developed out of the tea drinking etiquette in the meditation hall of the Zen monastery. Tea wakes and soothes both mind and body without intoxicating them. Tea is a symbol of Zen. In a part of the ground of the Daito Kuji Temple in Kyoto is the Shinju An, a sub temple. The Shinju An was founded by Ikkyu, the famous Zen priest. It is a fitting place to recall what he left behind and the climate of the Zen culture that flourished about him. Many anecdotes are told of Ikkyu. Most of them originated long after his death but they are nevertheless appropriate. E.Q. was a very free spirit and had a sharp sense of satire. He is said to have been given a document certifying his enlightenment by the Zen master who taught him, but he refused to accept it. He later burnt it in front of witnesses. The important thing for him was the practice of his enlightenment, not a piece of paper to prove it. E.Q. was probably the freest mind Japanese Zen produced. He lived during the Muromachi period, a turbulent time in Japan's history. There was a succession of wars, and those in positions of authority or power were continually being ousted and replaced by their followers. But it was also a time of greater intellectual freedom than any other in the history of Japan. E.Q. attracted the foremost creative minds to his circle. No writers and actors, painters, poets, the originator of the tea ceremony. These were the builders of Japan's medieval culture.
The connection between Ikkyu and Juko, the founder of the tea ceremony, began here. Juko, by studying the practice of Zen under Ikkyu, came into contact with the Zen essence which sees Buddhism in the routines of everyday life. This led him to formulate a new tea ceremony, a way of tea. Tea was to be drunk in a simple rustic hut without any of the gaudiness of the tea ceremony followed by the fashionable people of the time. Beauty was to be found in wabi, a taste for simplicity and quiet. And the goal of the ceremonial drinking of tea was to become master of one's own mind. Its object was, in other words, the awakening of the realization that the hidden principles of tea and Zen were one and the same. Zen no Rikyu perfected the ceremony. Rikyu said that the purpose of the tea ceremony was to make the tea room a pure and immaculate Buddha land. The host makes the tea and serves his guests. Probably the only sound to be heard is that of the simmering water in the kettle or the wind outside. Through the agency of a bowl of tea, the barrier between host and guests disappears. Both the host who prepares the tea and the guest who watches become one with the wind that sweeps the sky and are filled with profound peace and serenity in the dimly lit space of the small tea room a mere six by nine feet. This feeling expands into the universe to produce an effect that resembles the satori in Zen, which negates the self. The tea room. Various ways of presenting beauty were designed in order to create a Buddha land on this earth. Space was reduced to a minimum, 
from four and a half tatami mats, or nine feet square, to two mats, or six feet square. The light was dimmed to turn the mind inward. The design was made as simple as possible, and the room was given that silence which makes the sound of simmering water conspicuous. The spirit of Zen shows itself here in the form of the tea room. The Church of Saint Chapelle in Paris. In the clear story, one is enveloped in the radiance of light. Its stained glass windows fill the walls, and seen from below, the arched ceiling strengthens the impression of height. Those who worship here feel they are kneeling on God's ground. A church in the Gothic style and a tea room. The results of efforts made in both East and West to transform religious impulses into the creation of beauty at about the same time in history left two conspicuously contrasting worlds. Zen is a religion of beautiful form. Zazen, or seated meditation, is the basis of Zen training. Uncertainty and difficulty show themselves in one's posture during Zazen. Beauty in posture is proof of how deeply one has advanced in Zen training. In Zen monastic life, simplicity, cleanliness, and form are highly valued. Before going out to practice takuhatsu, or religious begging, the monks check each other's dress. And when they walk along a road, they form a neat line and walk at a fixed pace. Their clean robes and leggings are simple, but have the beauty of things that have seen long service. Zen is in no way an abstract religion separated from structure. Because of its intense spirituality, it attaches great importance to maintaining the beauty of forms and keeping the environment pure. Zen is thus a religion capable of producing specific creative arts about itself. Among those who gathered around EQ were a number of artists.
Chasoku, for example, repeatedly practiced Zazen under the instruction of Ikkyu and sympathized with his unyielding spirit. It was from relationships like this that Zen arts attained new heights. Chasoku also left a number of paintings on the sliding partitions of the Shinjuan. Landscape. Here there is no objective drawing of what is seen, but the impact of the artist's state of mind. An unprejudiced and absolutely free brush expresses at one stroke the subconscious rather than the conscious. These are the best expressions of the spirituality that Zen possesses. This type of painting, which uses India ink, developed in China together with Zen. In China, it has been said since ancient times that black ink has five colors. In other words, the variety of shades that can be produced with it is limitless. These paintings are produced after the artist has developed a full knowledge of color. The paintings leave bold blank spaces, but what is a blank space? It corresponds to the Zen phrase, no dependence on the written word. One chooses silence before truth, which cannot be expressed in words. The black of India ink is a color that transcends color, and something which cannot be depicted with this black is left as a blank space. Zen teaches that Buddha exists within our minds and not outside us. Zen does not, therefore, set up a transcendental god or Buddha above human beings. The goal of Zen training, in short, is to discover one's original self within oneself. We have lost sight of our true selves as a result of desires and worldly distractions. Zen trainees constantly aim at liberation from such judgments and desires by dint of steady effort. A Buddha is one who reaches the awareness of the true self, attains satori, in other words, as a result of his efforts.
In Zen painting, preference is given to realistic human figures suggestive of the state of Satori, or landscapes imminent with opportunities of stimulating Satori. paintings brought to Japan from China have been highly valued since the Muromachi period as models of Zen art. These paintings were not necessarily considered orthodox in China, the home of the paintings, nor very much admired there, as the style was too free and unconventional, and the pictures were boldly subjective. To find the spiritual working of Zen in these paintings, and to be able to transmit that to society in general, can be said to show a new sense of beauty by Japanese Zen culture. This is the work of a Japanese Zen priest in the late Edo period, which lasted from the beginning of the 17th to the latter half of the 19th centuries. The animals seem detached, and there is an implicit power in the bamboo grove. 